it is not possible to influence decisions in favor of the backward regions. Now, Sri Vithalgaru mentioned about the Telangana Regional Committee, that it should not have been scrapped. I agree. Even if it was revived a year ago, revived in the same way in which he was functioning when he was secretary of that Telangana Regional Committee, perhaps the expectations would have been influenced in a different way today. The voices about Telangana and about regional issues would perhaps have been very, very different from what they are. But in the first place, why was it abolished? A thing which could be abolished so easily at that time. Can it be revived? How was it not revived last year? Now we find a very sorry spectacle of a regional committee chairman appearing on TV without any resources, asking for resources and uh, why should I be a chairman, why should I continue like that now? And we get a very a clear proof before the public at large that no regional development is possible within a framework like this. So we have to go by the experience, the politics of development, the dynamics of change particularly that we have been seeing. Yes, theoretically I agree. I mean, if had it been revived, if it, it would have been good. But it has not been revived. It cannot be revived. And this is what Professor Nasimha Reddy said, I, or you, Harupal also, I think, came very categorically in my last essay. The last essay comes out of those nine essays of 40 years of, you know, over that period. So therefore, in the context of economic reforms, when the role of the state has become extremely important, even decisive in development, on the one hand, and also in providing safety nets for the deprived sections on the other. This has also been discussed. When you talk of inclusive growth or economic reforms with the human face or equitable development, what does it mean? It means, first of all, a recognition that in economic reforms phase, only those who have power and economic resources and influence, they stand to benefit in the first instance. And those sections which do not have resources, do not have influence and power, they will be left behind. And therefore, it is the responsibility of the state to provide the safety nets, to take care of them. This role of the state has also been, been emphasized, but not much in evidence, of course. We don't see much happening. On the other hand, the reverse is happening. You find land being acquired. Even in a state like West Bengal, what happened, we know, under the Marxist government. So the ideology of development under the impact of economic reforms is such that we are not really housing, of course, in Andhra Pradesh, government has been very much in the forefront, but despite this, our land policies have been such that the small landholders have been marginalized. The land has become out of reach for the small and even the middle classes because of the soaring prices. So therefore, the deprived sections have been further marginalized in the context of economic reforms. But it is the responsibility of the state to look after them. So this is the role of the state now. Can it be left, therefore, to a, a larger kind of a state where there are divergent levels of development and divergent interests and pulls and pressures? And the results we have seen. In the last issue is of the governance where population is extremely important, population growth. I remember when Andhra Pradesh was formed, 50 years ago, I was a student activist. When I said Nehru was overwhelmed, I can tell you, I got the message right from the you know, corridors of power. <coughs> I was a student leader at the time. 
and most of you may be knowing in 50s the students were in the forefront of the movement for israel andra the communist movement basically was in the forefront for that and student movement was that and i was there in that we got the message that i don't want to name the individuals but certainly nehru's name did appear there we were for i mean the whole mainstream movement at the time was for vishal andhra for integration nehru is very hesitant azad is against integration he wants to implement the sarc nehru is very as usual wavering and all that what to do maybe a few demonstrations here in hyderabad will help i sat with this rivi raju late rivi raju who was very closely with me at the time in the mls quarters i remember he was a congressman i was not a congressman but working closely with them i don't want to go into all the details but <coughs> politics do matter in this the way things happened at the time of governance is extremely important in haryana of course you may be right they may not have fulfilled the expectations of a smaller state so this is what decentralization 